Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage and Glen Ellen, Illinois. And in this video today, we're going to take a look at text files, specifically input text files. We're going to do it in C++, and this is something that you all, at least if you're doing this for my class, you will need this for the upcoming checkpoint that's coming up in a few days. So let's take a look at all the details. Let's cut through it all and get to the details here of what's important to get this all working. So by now we should all be very familiar with using CN and C out for input and output. And just, you know, if I wanted to print hello world to the screen or something like that, I would just learn how to type again and not just do that. And then you can use end line characters and all of this. And this is very familiar, at least it should be since this is like week 12 or 13 of the course by now. And so I can run this. It just takes a little while the first time and there it goes. And so there's my hello world. And so this is very, you know, you know, pretty familiar. And once we get the file open, once we do this first part here, where we get the file open, and then I guess also make sure that the file did open properly so that we can work with it. Basically, everything that you know from here for how we use C out and C in, all of that directly 100% applies the exact same way. Uh, it's just that instead of printing the information to the screen, it will print that information to the file. So is it those first couple steps are just a little bit different, but then once once that's all said and done, it's all pretty good from there. So in this case, I have this file. I have it with 11 numbers in it, uh, data.txt. Uh, another thing to note is that the data, at least with Visual Studio, the data file needs to be in the same directory where my CPP file is. So everything has to be kind of in the same place. And so I do see that here listed, and I have a couple extra files that are for other, other reasons, other details. Uh, but we're going to use data.txt and main.cpp here, and again, they have to be in the same place. Okay, so let's take a look. So let's see. So in this case, I need to use fstream to be able to open a file, either way, for in-text mode, uh, for either input or output. And then I can say in this case, it is an input file stream, if you know, if for input file. Uh, and then we're going to say, I'm just going to call it input, and I'm, that's just going to be the name of the variable or the object that gets created here. And I'm going to put data.txt in here. Save it all up. Okay, so in this case, this is saying, let's try to find this data file that's in the folder somewhere, whatever. Let's try to open it and work with it as an input file. Basically what that is saying. And now the second step would be, well, did this actually work? Did, you know, did this file open and am I, am I able to actually go ahead and work with it? So I need to check the validity of this thing. So I can say as such, and I go, if my input dot, got a good bad fail, if it, if it did fail, and I was like, fail is true or whatever, well, this is where things can go wrong and I can print out something and I can print out file, file did not open properly, something like that. And then we shouldn't do anything with this thing, right? Because if it didn't open, well, it doesn't matter what I do from here on in. Things aren't going to work like I did, like I wanted to. So in this case, it should not print anything because that file is correct. And there it goes, didn't print anything. And if I just modify this and ruin it and change it into something else, it should pop up and say the file did not open properly. So that is the validity part of this. And there's lots of ways to do this. And uh, across the board when it comes to this kind of stuff. But in this case, we're good to go here. And now, uh, if this if this fails, well, then I want to print something out. But otherwise, I want to actually start working with it. And no matter what, it, it's safe to do this. Uh, the input file can be closed off. That's the final step here, closing the file. And you want to do that as the last step. And you can do it whether it uh, the the failure uh, was a failure or it, it was successful because it uh, it knows that if it doesn't work out and you try to close something on something that's broken, uh, it won't crash and ruin your program. Okay, so that basically that's so right now everything we have here is the you know pretty much good to go here. And now the final step here is will this work with file? Now, with all of this, you know, all this infrastructure here, this input can be used instead of C, uh, C in, and then we can take information from the file and put it into our program, into the variables that we're going to be working with. And I'll show you that right now. Okay, so you do have to know how this all works under the hood. You have to have an understanding of what's, what you're looking at in that data file. Uh, just imagine if you tried to open up a Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel file, 
and just has a whole ton of garbage in there, which makes sense to whoever's working with that over at Microsoft trying to set up your Excel, you know, your worksheet or your spreadsheet or whatever it is you're working off of. And in this case, we need to know that there's 11 values. They're all integer values. I guess it doesn't matter if it's integer or double. We can work with it just the same. But that's the understanding we have moving forward. I have data members here. They're space separated. We can have comma separated variables. We can have space separated kind of variables. We can have all sorts of different uh, uh, formatting of the data, but it's a very simple space separated idea here. And so as we're processing this file and this thing is open, basically the file is looking at the first, you know, the first byte of the file. And as we move toward the end, we find the end by asking basically, have you found the end of file? And there is a very specific character called the end of file character it's looking for. Uh, but in this case, we're not necessarily worried directly about that. But we can say here, while, and this is not necessarily, you could do an if, but this is a while statement here is a much better option. And I can say, while my input file dot EOF, asking, hey, are you end of file? As long as it's not true, which means there's still stuff to process, let's do something with that. And so I can, you know, basically from here, I can just set up an integer value. I'll just call it X just for now. And I can say, instead of doing from C in, like from user input, I can say, okay, from the input file, take information and pipe it in to that X variable, and let's just print it out. And let me add a space, because otherwise it'll get a little weird. And so now let's just try running this and see what we get. And I believe we'll get the 1 through 11 to print out on the screen. Oh, <laughs> forgot about the uh, first part here where I just mangled that. Well, that's good to know. So now let me try this again. Let me put the correct file in and try again here. And there is my 1 through 11. So basically what is happening here is we're taking information off of a, you know either hard disk or a solid disk drive or something, something that's outside of our program. We're bringing it in, and one by one by one, we're taking the values from the file and putting them into something in our working memory, in our working program, and we're working from it, you know, working with it from there. And so now that we have that understanding, everything else is kind of just... Uh, you know, just slight details here. So if I wanted to keep track of the number of, uh, of uh, pieces of input, pieces of data that have come in, if I want to keep track of the total, I could do that as well. And so now in this case here, I could say, okay, I get my input from the file, and then I can say, okay, I got a piece of input, so I'm going to increase the number of pieces of data I've gotten, and then I'm going to increase the total by that X value. And so right now I don't have a printout for that, but I can put a breakpoint in and I can run my program. And oops, I'm using n uninitialized. I should set it to zero. Okay, fair enough. Sorry, my bad on that. Thank you, compiler. Okay, so in all fairness, when I run this program with the breakpoint where it is, I actually can't see those two variables because when I hit this closing curly brace, these guys go out of scope and they're lost to time. So uh, just to fix this up, I'm going to put something in here. I'm just putting something in here just for the moment, just so we can see it. Uh, and you'll be able to see that um, this will fix it up because now I'll be able to access the variables at the same scope level. Uh, so let's run this one more time. And you'll be able to see. Or, come on, come on, file. There we go. And you'll be able to see when I hit the pause point here that I have 11 values that I've that I've basically processed through that file, and then this should be 66. Yeah, 66 is the number because it's just the sum of the numbers from 1 to 11. And so, what's cool about this having this while loop this way is that it could there could be more than 11, there could be less than 11, there could be a whole different type of number of values here. And so, if that's the case, then it will be able to figure that out for me as opposed to hard coding this thing in here. So now there's nine and then now there should be what, 45? Just the numbers from one to nine sum up to 45. So basically I could take this file for file and I don't have to worry about this, the, the program, as long as everything is space separated and every, you know, everything is obeying those rules, I'll get the correct values that I, that I want to have. So now the final step here is when I get to this part of my program is I have all the, the values here so I can just print out what I have. So I can say the number of um, data elements is something like that. And then I can print out my n value with an n line. And then I could go ahead and after this, and go the sum of the data elements is. Let's add one more space here just to have it even out here. And I can say, okay, there's my total with an n line. And so now, now the final step would be the average. And so I do remember from the... Uh, lab assignment that I just graded yesterday. 
this yesterday in my time, is that uh, the average for some of you came out incorrect because you didn't account for the fractional part that could come out of that. So just to say, what we would do here is we want to keep these integer values because the, you know, the number of pieces of data is always going to be an integer value. Uh, it's total maybe if it's one of those things if you wanted to think about it if this if I knew these were going to come in as double values you could keep track of that but generally speaking we want to keep the data in the same format uh, that we're expecting it to be and because like if we're using float points there is a chance that there could be a precision mistake even if there's even if there's a whole number at the end of the day uh, it is possible that uh, you still might lose some precision. So you want to total everything up in the formats that you that you want to to keep all the data precise, and then you do the math on the back end, uh, kind of like the way you guys do uh, sig fig uh, calculations and all that uh, all that scientific stuff that's uh, beyond the scope of uh, what we do generally in computer science. So I'm going to say the do the average here is going to be a double, and it's going to be when I take my total and I divide it into the total. And I divided by n. And let me just put this here. So maybe you're already seeing that something's going to pop up here. I'm going to steal this guy so I don't have to type everything out here. And I'm going to say the average of the data elements is. And I'm going to print out this average. And so let's see what happens. I don't need a breakpoint anymore to do this because the program will show me everything. And so now the numbers from 1 to 9. So there it is. There's the total of nine data elements is 45 and the average is five. And you go, yeah, that's perfectly legit because there's nine numbers. Well, what if there were 10? Oops. Or there, what if there were 10? And so let me run this one more time. And you can see it still comes out as five, even though we know the average is supposed to be 5.5. And so this just, just as a reminder for everyone here that there are different divisions, at least in computer programming. Uh, Python even has it, integer division versus floating point division. But total, in our case, is an integer. n is an integer. So this does integer division. The result is an integer value. In this case, it's a 5. And even though this is a double, this gets brought down to just a straight-up integer 5, and that integer 5 gets converted into a double 5, which gets printed out as a double 5. So the, you know, and I said we don't want to touch this. So this is, this is where the idea of casting comes in. And we take one of the two variables. Some people use the first one. Some people use the second. I like to do the one on the, the tail end of it. It's just, just the way I do things. And basically saying, okay, I know I have something here, and we know n is an integer. Convert that to double. And so this, this gets rid of the integer division and turns it into a floating point, double division. And then it will print out the correct value, 5.5 here. And if you do, and, you know, so there's the 5.5. And if you do care about any of the other formatting, then you just got to include IO manip and go from there. Uh, but there you go there. So just to say, we're printing to the screen all of this information, but we're getting all the information itself from a file. And so this, I think, will cover everything you need to know, at least to, you know, to get you going if you haven't already understood uh, the topics of, of, of the subject here. So please, if you have any, uh, if you have any uh, ability to come in, if you have questions, come into my lab hours. Uh, sorely, I sit there alone much of the time waiting for, for you guys to come. But uh, if you have any questions, please email me or come on in because uh, you will need this this weekend. So thanks for sticking it out with me as always on this. I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, and uh, we'll see you in future videos. Take care, everyone. See you.